continuous random variables. Now this section moves on from some work that you did last year on uh, discrete random variables, so make sure you understand the difference between continuous and discrete. Um, it might be worth going back and having a look at the videos to refresh your memory on what happened in S1 with discrete random variables. But it's the same as the difference between, um, say, the binomial and Poisson distribution that works with distinct um, discrete numbers and the normal distribution that works with continuous. Okay, so we have definitions here. So um, a continuous random variable is defined by a probability density function. I may shorten that to PDF at, at various points. And um, easiest to show you with an example. So here we have this probability den density function showing you what happens with x. So f of x is 0 0.2 if x is between 1 and 6 and 0 at any other time. So this is the graph of that probability. So between 1 and 6, we've got a value of 0.2 anywhere along that uh, range. Anywhere outside of the range is 0. So our graph looks like this. Now, the probability of um, x being within a range is defined as the area under that curve for that range. Now, if we are looking at the whole of the graph, since we know that the sum of probabilities have to add up to 1, that gives us this fact that the total area under the graph must also add up to 1. Okay, so now if we want to work out a particular probability, we're working out the area under the curve between that range. So for this one, we're looking between, um, for x being between 2.5 and 4. So we are working out this area here under the curve. Now this one's a nice straightforward one. It's a rectangle. So we can just do 1.5 times the 0 0.2 height and we get our probability of 0.3. Now just one thing to note, um, you may have noticed already that I'm using less than or equal to. Uh, with continuous random variables, uh, there is no difference between less than or equal to and less than. Remember, we kind of came across that a little bit with normal distribution. Um, we can't work out an exact value for, say, probability that x equals 1. Since it's continuous, we have to have a range, so you'd have to have an upper limit and a lower limit of what got rounded to 1, for example. Okay, so example number 2, we've got this one where f of x is our probability density function, but this time we've got a constant k in there, so our first job is to find out what k has to be, and then use it to work out a probability. So we've got this graph here, we have a multiple of x squared as our graph, and it's running between 0 and 2, and at any other time the probability is 0. Okay, so we are going to look for this area under the curve, since we know the area under the curve has to equal 1, as all the probabilities have to add up to 1. So if we are looking for the area under curve, we're going to have to integrate. We're doing this between 0 and 2, and we know it has to equal 1. So if we follow through that integration, we can substitute our values in to be able to work out k. Now that we've got k, we're working out the probability that x is between 0 and 1, which means we are finding the area under the curve between 0 and 1, which again is integrating. So, integrating between 0 and 1, now that we know what k is, we pop it into our function, follow that integration through, and we get our answer of 1 8th.